Today's tutorial is about frequency separation step by step and in this tutorial I'm not going to skip any step and I'm, it is going to be quite a slow tutorial so that each and everyone can understand each and every step I go through with my frequency separation. So I want each one of you guys to learn how I do frequency separation step by step. I've been uh, getting many questions about people getting lost while doing their frequency separation. So I want to take you guys through each and every step I go through when I'm doing my frequency separation from uh, creating your frequency separation layers to uh, setting up your mixer brush tool and the settings you use and blending your skin tones and are uh, going ahead to fine tune the image. And we are going to also be learning about global dodging and burning after we have done our frequency separation in order to add dimension to the image remember when you're doing frequency separation the image is kind of flattened so this tutorial is about each and every step we have to go through to do the final retouching of our portraits and if i can go ahead this image was taken by chuck daniels and let me introduce myself i'm ronix as usual from ronix photography so let me go in and start showing you guys each and every step and uh, let me start by saying frequency separation uh, usually divides the image into two layers that is it divides it into the color and the texture layer so we we have to look for a way, a way of how to uh, blend these two layers together so that you can get a uniform texture and uniform skin tones in the image so when you're working with textures i will be working with uh, the skin powers and when, you're, when we are working with the colors, we'll be working with the skin tones of the image. So basically, that is what uh, frequency separation does to the images. So remember, it is going to divide uh, the skin into two. That is the skin texture and the color. So as you, you have seen in most videos, uh, some people prefer to call the skin texture the high frequency and the color texture the low frequency so it doesn't matter what you call it it what really matters is uh, the step you go uh, through to retouch and give out final quality and well retouched images to your client or the images you put out post online so this image was taken by chuck daniels i'm going to put his link in the description so you guys can follow him up He's an amazing portrait photographer. So let me start. Uh, let me go in and start showing you guys how we do create African separation layers uh, right here in Photoshop. So usually we start by duplicating the background layer. You can just drag and drop right here twice. You can see. Or you can just simply press Ctrl J on the keyboard or Command J on the keyboard. So after you have created these two layers right here, uh, come to this eye icon and uh, deactivate it. So also come to uh, click and before you deactivate, make sure you uh, rename this layer. So usually for frequency separation, uh, the lowermost layer is usually the color or or a low frequency layer. I'm going to abbreviate this and usually for the upper layer it is uh, it contains uh, the texture the texture or we can name this high frequency layer so if at all you come uh, along these two terms uh, I hope you don't get confused so uh, after deactivating this icon uh, make sure you selected on the low, uh, color or the low frequency layer so just come right here remember we are now going to blur out the texture from this image that's why so that we can also remain with uh, only the color of this portrait so come to filter uh, blur then come to Gaussian blur so when you come to Gaussian blur uh, you get uh, this little box right here and when you click right here you can just uh, zoom zoom out your image so we are going to zoom out the image and 
uh, move this slider right here until we see less of uh, the skin texture of this model uh, while uh, still seeing the details of the model like the eyes, the nose and the lips. I'm sorry, this story is going to be a slow one because I want each and every one to understand the steps we go through uh, while creating African separation and retouching and everything. So you guys should bear with me. So we are going to uh, move this slider until we uh, see less of the skin texture. But at the same time, well, we are seeing uh, the details of uh, the model's face. So just make sure you move this really, really carefully because it is the one that is going to uh, determine on uh, the final results of our image. So I think for this, I think I let me go in for 12 because you can, as you can see, the texture has been blurred out, but uh, we still can see all the facial features clearly and well. So click OK. So after doing that, uh, click on this eye icon right here and uh, make sure you have, you have selected this texture or high frequency layer. So what we are going to do now, we are going to extract uh, the texture from this very layer right here. So remember, we are going to subtract the skin texture from the color layer. So come, when you come to image and click apply image this is what you'll get uh, for the source this is like the name of our image you're working on so remember we are going to subtract from uh, the color layer so come right here and uh, select the color layer and remember what we are doing we are doing subtraction so we are subtracting the texture from the color layer so come right here to the blending and click subtract so when you click subtract initially for the very first time you won't have these uh, uh, these figures right here you'll have different figures but for my case i've been using uh, this step so make sure you feed in these figures uh, scale is usually at 2 and offset 128 and make sure the opacity is what at 100 percent so make sure these two are not checked and this uh, invert is not checked make sure you are this right here is checked the preview is checked so these are the settings you initially put uh, when you're in this apply image so click ok so we want to regain back the color yeah we want to regain back the color of this image so come right here to the blending option right here you can see so when you come to the blending option I'm sorry why I don't know why the piece was not responding so when you come to the blending option uh, make sure you come and select linear light so when you select linear light you'll get back the uh, initial image and this step really shows you that uh, you have successfully conducted your frequency separation layers so we, uh, we are going to put uh, these two layers in a group yeah so just uh, click Control or yeah, click Control and O command and click on these two layers. Make sure they are selected or highlighted. Then click Control G on the keyboard to group them. So we can name this layer uh, frequency separation. So when you name this layer, so I want to show you guys what we usually do. And for frequency separation, we are going to use the mixer brush tool. Make sure you create a black and white layer. Like as you can see, this image, uh, this image, you can't see why the skin tones are really imperfect. And so remember, when you're using a mixer brush tool, uh, we have to get the, those areas that don't have a uh, uniform skin texture, and we kind of paint uh, to give them uh, that smooth transition uh, between from one tone to another and when using the Visa brush tool uh, make sure you first of all create that black and white layer then when you're doing the mixing make sure you do mix the highlights alone the mid-tones alone and the shadows alone so I uh, click on this texture or high frequency layer 
and come here to your adjustments and update a black and white adjustment layer so this is the initial or default black and white so come to the red channel remember we want to see where the skin tones are imperfect and we are going to try to blend them so they can have smooth transitions and uh, in that process create us some something that is really perfect enough so just drag a uh, click on this slider and drag the red uh, I think here is fine to that value so yeah this is like a disclaimer don't show your model this because they'll feel bad they'll lose self-esteem so they'll feel they, they won't feel comfortable with their skin so you shouldn't show them this so click on the color all of frequency layer. and when you click on this I come right here to your brushes if at all you don't have your mixer you just right click on your brushes and if at all you don't have your mixer brush tool among the brushes like I do like I don't have it so just right click right down here as you can see I can see all these sliders so whatever appears right here is what the icon just right click on it and look for your mixer brush tool so I've selected my mixer brush tool so make sure for the settings of the mixer brush tool uh, these are the settings make sure it is a clean brush and uh, the reason for that is we want the brush to uh, clean itself after each and every stroke on this image so make sure uh, this box right here is selected yeah it is highlighted and selected a uh, reason for this one the brush to clean itself after each and every stroke it's like when you're painting and after using a given color you dip the brush in water so that you can clean it and apply another color so this is what this does so make sure your wetness is at 10 percent the load at 75 percent and the mix at 90 and the flow at 100 percent and make sure sample all layers is not checked the reason for the wetness being really low is and to adjust the wetness just drop down and you can slide it the reason for the wetness being low is i will want to retain so so much texture from this image yeah after doing african separation and when you put your wetness up like 100 every time you paint uh, it will be creating a plastic image and you'll be losing out on the skin texture so make sure your wetness doesn't go above 10 percent unless you're going in for a plastic image but if at all you want to get an image that has enough skin texture and it looks natural enough make sure you don't go above a wetness of 10 percent and these are the settings i'm going to use so make sure you are on your color or lower frequency layer and zoom in a little bit to <coughs> the skin so increase your mixer brush uh, using the left and the right brackets on the keyboard so con uh, start painting remember what i told you when using uh, this uh, mixer brush tool make sure you mix the highlights alone the mid-tones alone and the shadows alone and uh when you reach on this uh transition where the highlights and the midtones are transitioning just gently paint over that area to get uh, that smooth transition uh, between the highlights and the shadows and you shouldn't uh over mix one area so so much uh because uh it may as a result remember your witness is at 10 remember when you do mix unless uh, the area has so many uneven skin tones that are vivid or strong enough so that's why the witness that and when you do mix that area for too long uh, it is going to uh, make double the effect of our witness so you'll be like applying 20 percent to that image so like as you see right here we had uh, strong transitions and the skin tones were not perfectly matching so 
that's why I have over mixed this area repeatedly so yeah that is initially what we do so keep on checking on your progress turn this off click on the eye icon of the black and white layer so you can see the before after before after we have blended these skin tones really well so click the eye icon and make sure you're still selected on the color all of frequency layer so just continue uh, blending uh, the transitioning of uh, this area so if at all you feel and uh, when using the mixer brush to make sure you don't over zoom in maybe to this because you won't you won't be seeing the transitioning really really well so just make sure you zoom in to a reasonable size i think this is acceptable so uh continue uh blending uh these little transitions as you're seeing we have something like uh a shadow right here that's why I am mixing it alone and when we come to these mid-tones right here and the other thing make sure you mix according to the shape of uh, the area just follow make your strokes according to the shape of that particular area so just continue doing that so we have this dark darkness on the cheekbone I've mixed it alone so I'll come and I'll mix these uh, mid-tones together increase my brush using the uh, the right bracket on the keyboard and uh, when you're mixing a smaller area make sure you reduce on the brush by using uh, the, the left bracket on the keyboard so just continue uh, blending and mixing these areas uh, remember we are what you're doing right now we are kind of uh, harmonizing uh, the skin tones and like i said this tutorial is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial so if at all you are in a hurry i don't think this is meant for you but if at all you want to learn the best way you should uh, stick around and watch us do everything step by step so i will turn this off to see my progress so before after before after you can see i'm trying to uh, blend these tones together so put back my black and white because it guides us so when i come to the nose i have zoomed in because i want to be precise with the areas i'm trying to mix as you see uh, this area on the nose we have some dark areas right here and as you see i'm kind of uh, not mixing on the highlight because I want to uh, mix it alone or separately so I'm now uh, blending uh, the highlight of uh, the nose area so let me turn this off and let's see what we have done you can see it is really really subtle but we still have uh, the skin texture in this beautiful image so thumb and uh, the reason for turning uh, the black and white layer on and off is to see if at all we have done any mistake or to see the uh, areas we haven't worked on pretty pretty well uh, remember the color also shows you where the skin tones are imperfect and where we do have uh, to mix a little bit more so that's why we keep on turning the uh, that layer on and off so because we want to a uh, gate where the skin tones are not uh, transitioning really well so just continue as you see i'm mixing this area but uh, my strokes are following the shape of the area i'm trying to work on so let's zoom out because we want to see if at all we have done any errors so you can see before after before after and as you can see now we have some faulty area right here so let's work on it without the black and white so we are working on this area right here 
So if I told you do a mistake, make sure you use Ctrl Z on the keyboard. So as you're seeing right now, I'm trying to uh, follow my color layer because uh, for the black and white, I wasn't seeing some areas I hadn't blended really, really pretty well. So, and I think I've seen retouchers do. Most of them tend to forget, I should say, they ignore because as a retoucher, you shouldn't forget some areas when you're retouching, like this area, the chest and neck area. So, get back your black and red. You can see now how this is different, the face is different from the neck. So, make sure you uh, blend uh, these areas too, don't ignore them because uh, they will determine your final work and people will judge your entire work by looking at not only the face but uh, they will look at each and every area of the image so if at all you are reluctant with uh, retouching some or most of the areas that are not the face yeah people will judge you by that and they will be like ah, this retoucher is not careful with their retouching so this is uh, how we do the high end skin retouching using frequency separation in photoshop so i think we are done uh, with the blending the skin tone so you can see before after before after the difference is not really really much so click on the black and white layer and i drag it to the trash can because we no longer need it so come back to your color all over frequency layer and select your this is your lasso tool just right click to get the lasso tool and it is usually on top so make sure for the feathering you use 15 pixels because we want uh, that fine selection every time we select the area of the skin so what we are going to do we are like going to fine tune this image so make sure you're on your lower frequency so make a selection uh, on the area that has really really much texture yeah much skin texture so and when you're making this selection you really have to be careful because uh we wouldn't want to select other areas on the model's face so just be careful with this step so come to filter blur then come to gaussian blur so when you click on gaussian blur uh, make sure you slide uh, this until you get uh, the perfect yeah let me zoom out until you get the perfect uh, skin tones uh, skin texture sorry until you get the perfect skin texture right here so you have to slide well you see this area right here so we are going to uh, slide you can see we are going to slide it until we see where the skin texture is perfect and i think it is really really fine here you can see the difference before then when i start sliding this yeah slide and continue doing the sliding so when you take it all the way overboard you can see it doesn't work for us so make sure you're really careful with this step so let's slide it i think we shall go in for around uh 30 let's go in for around 38.7 so just click ok and the other secret i have to, say, uh, to share with you guys uh, when you reach this step if at all you don't want to waste time while sliding this make sure i did some research about this make sure you uh, get the radius you initially applied to be uh when you're applying on this color layer remember like maybe if you used 10 as a radius for this blur layer make sure you, when you multiply 10 by 3 you get maybe 30 so on 30 when you add two to the values you can get this perfect skin tone so multiply your first radius by three and add two to the value you get so that is the trick i had to share with you guys so click ok so we are going to be applying this effect on the rest of uh, the areas of the skin so just um select according to the shape of the area so right click and 
click Gaussian blur. So we are going to keep on doing this. So select the area of the screen according to the shape, right click and apply the Gaussian blur. I'm sorry if I told you using maybe a tablet. Uh, I'm just doing this like a beginner tutorial for everyone to learn and I wouldn't want to go in for those advanced or tablet methods. So this is like for everyone to learn and try out. So that's why I'm not using a tablet term. So just continue uh, making a selection according to the shape right click and apply the Gaussian blur so keep on doing that for uh, the rest of uh, the image you can see the image really looks natural but at the same time uh, we are retaining uh, the skin texture of the model and yeah the portrait is not looking unnatural or plastic so this is what I do for my frequency separation as you're seeing, I'm uh, selecting according to uh, the shape of that area I want to apply the effect on. So make sure you don't skip this area right here. We want to apply. Uh, this step is usually like fine tuning your image after using the mixer brush tool because uh, when you're using a mixer brush tool, there are areas you may have uh, accidentally skipped while you were applying it so uh, the other thing if at all you feel the effect is too much for the area you're trying to apply it on make sure you let me show you maybe i uh, and the other thing is when you're applying this effect on maybe this part of the nose so let me right click and i show you what i'm trying to imply so you can see we have lost this highlight on the nose area and if at all i want to reduce on the effect of this a uh, click click sorry shift control f on the keyboard uh to to fade it or reduce on its effect on the skin so i think we shall go in for 32 yeah and uh to uh, deselect just make sure you you can click anywhere else or make a new selection so the thing really automatically does itself so that's what we are doing we are now fine tuning this neck or chest area uh, like i don't want to add anything because i want you guys to uh, learn each and every step about retouching i've been getting so many questions like uh for most of my retouching tutorials uh i tend to be fast and I leave out so many people that's why I had to make this step by step video so that you guys can understand each and every step so I think we are done with our I think we are done with our frequency separation so you can see the before after before after the image really looks awesome so what we are going to do we want to remove uh, these we have some blemishes and you can choose what tool really works for you but uh, since this is a beginner tutorial remember the blemishes are usually on uh, the texture layer and since this is a beginner tutorial i'm going to be using a uh, spot healing brush or you can either use the clone stamp tool so let me show you guys how each and every tool works uh for example these two i want to use the patch and the spot healing so for the patch tool make sure you on uh this for the spot healing tool make sure you are on your high high frequency or texture layer so just uh, get and paint over the area you want to clean or remove the blemish so make sure uh, it is the tool is bigger than the blemish you want to remove so just increase and make sure it is just slightly bigger and just dab over it so we want to dab over those areas you can see we are now removing those blemishes you can see before after so right now we are removing like those pimples and uh, how to use the clone stamp tools too so just hold down the alternate button to 
sample from a clean area or down then click to sample from a clean area and paint over the blemish so that is how you do use uh, the clone stamp tool uh, to remove the blemishes after doing your freaking separation and uh, the reason as to why I prefer I, I removing the blemishes at this very step is when we were using the mixer brush tool uh, we tend to flatten out or remove uh, those blemishes yeah and so when you reach on this step uh, most of the blemishes have been removed so we have less work to do while removing uh, the blemishes so uh, right now I'm using the stamp uh, the spot filling tool and I'm on my high texture layer so just be careful with that so I think we are done with uh, the removing of uh, these simple simple blemishes uh, from our model's face yeah you can take your time with that step so I think we are done with African separation so let me show you guys how to add dimension or shape to the model's face yeah so just come right here down to the adjustment layers and uh, click on curves so we're going to be enhancing the lights and shadows using dodging and burning in photoshop so when you click on your curves you'll get this so click on the mid point and now brighten so make sure this is selected click ctrl i to invert or hide the effect so we are going to name this dodge remember when we dodge yeah I'm sorry I, I spelled this wrong but hope you understand it so when we are dodging we dodge the highlights or we enhance the highlights while doing the dodging and when we are burning we enhance the shadows remember the image kind of uh, looks flat after our frequency separation so we have to enhance it or bring back these dimensions to the model's face so make sure you do that so come back to our curves still and now this time around we are going to uh, make click on the midpoint and now drag down to darken so make sure what uh, this layer is selected click ctrl i on the keyboard so you're going to name this burn remember when you're burning we burn the shadows so i'm going to put these two in a group ctrl g to group them so we can name this a dodge and burn and guys if at all you're learning from this tutorial don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you have just landed on this video from this channel so uh click on your dodge layer make sure you have selected this mask right here and if i can go ahead with that remember to always create a black and white layer on top of uh, your burn layer so make sure you click on the burn layer and now come down and uh, create a black and white layer so remember we want something to guide us to show us where to dodge and burn so remember frequency separation kind of uh, flattened the image so we are going to click on the group for the frequency separation and deactivate it then we are going to come right here and now we are going to click on dodge so when you click on the dodge layer remember when you're dodging we dodge as uh, the highlights or we enhance the highlights small and when we are burning we enhance the shadows or we burn the shadows or enhance them the more so we are like contouring our image to add shape or dimension you can see we had these beautiful shapes like the cheekbones and these highlights so we want to enhance them so come and click on your brush tool in photoshop and now make sure the opacity is at around nine percent because nine or ten percent so make sure you're on your dodge layer and make sure white is on the foreground so you can toggle like this by clicking on these two arrows to put white on top or you can reset it by clicking this if at all you don't have these two colors right here so 
we are going to start painting on every area that has a highlight in this portrait so I increase your brush and just uh, paint over using a white brush on those areas uh, you want to enhance a little bit more so just come right here on the chin and dodge there so dodge on this lip area then we have some highlight right there and when you're doing this make sure you don't zoom all the way in because you may not be seeing uh, what you are doing really really well so let's also dodge on the forehead of the model so click on your burn layer and now uh, uh, enhance these shadows remember when you're burning we burn the shadows so just to paint over gently and don't over burn a given area for too long because the effect may not look nice at all since we are using a high opacity so just so when we come to the nose area zoom in a little bit and we want to enhance the shape right here so i think that is fine i think that is fine so let's turn back the frequency separation layer on and now click on the black and white layer and drag it through the trash can icon so you can see before after before after you can see the image really now has shape or dimension so what we are going to do right now let's do a little bit of color grading in photoshop and we are going to be using the selective color only so this tutorial is not really long and boring for you guys so click right here and click on selective color so we want to add science to the red so make sure you are on the red channel uh, so when you turn this down you add science to the red channel and when you turn this up you add greens to the red channel so i'm going to leave it at around uh, three negative three so i want to i want uh when you uh, turn this you add magenta to the image and here you'll be adding uh, greens to the image so i'm going to leave this at around eight so i'm going to also add blacks to my red channel i think we are done with the color grading uh, for this image you can see before after before after so if at all you feel the effect is too much just come and reduce a click down and reduce on the opacity so let's add in a little bit of contrast to this image so come right down here and uh, look for your brightness of contrast and we are going to be using legacy for our contrast make sure it is selected and uh, we are going to turn this up a little bit so that is done so we can group this to ctrl g and we can name this color grading cg for color grading you can see the before after before after we have done the color grading so this tutorial has been about how to do your frequency separation in photoshop step by step and what we did was let me uh, get this so we did frequency separation uh, using a mesa brush and the lasso tool method after doing that uh, we came and added a uh, global dodging and burning to add shape and dimension to this image and we finally did our color grading so if i group all these select them and click ctrl g on the keyboard you can see the before after before after so this tutorial has been about how to do your frequency function in photoshop and it has been a step-by-step -step tutorial and i hope you guys have learned something from this tutorial and yeah enjoy while you retouch your images and yeah put out some good content some good work online on the internet and turn heads and impress people and yeah make money from your photography and this image was by chuck daniels and i'm ronix from ronix photography Thank you for watching. See you in yet another retouching tutorial on this channel.